Armor of Forger, much like many other Arma titles, has a large focus on intricate details in order to try and get as close to an emulation of real-life military situations as a game can possibly get. One of these intricate details that I think gets overlooked often, though, is just how accurate the northern airport in Reforger is to a real-life airport. In order to really show off just how accurate it is, I decided to have my father onto the channel to tell us just how accurate it is. He's a guy that has 22 years worth of experience in the field as an electrical engineer who works on airports, and I figured with his help, we would be able to see just how close to reality the Armour Forger Airport really is. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. So the game is pretty realistic. It has a Malzar approach system. Um, which is considered a medium approach system. So when the weather is, is, is not clear, they, they have additional lighting to lay in the plane. Um, this, this runway layout, lighting layout actually is the correct configuration. Um, they took the initiative to show not only the, the approach lighting, but this threshold lighting, as you see right here, um, and also indicated all the markings as per FAA or IKO, which is European standards. Um, to, your, to your left here is a taxiway. They represented correctly the whole position, which is pretty cool. Um, and also what a taxiway would look like entering into an apron area. Again, this is a small apron area, but they still denoted it, the white line. Um, they also showed taxiway edge lighting, which is on the right-hand side here. And that's pretty cool. Um, it's not LED, but it's first gen lighting, um, which so is like pretty pretty in interesting. Early nineties. Yeah, so that would be like early ninety nine two thousand. Mm -hmm. um, if we go down the runway, and to the right, to the right, yeah, that's right. Zoom in on that. That is the Pappy, which is a approach. Uh, helps the planes land with the approach angle, the correct approach angle. Red, you're dead. Green, you're good to land. Um, it's four units. And they went all out with detail in this game to show it correctly per the manufacturer, which is pretty neat. Um, next, again, another taxiway on the right here with lighting. Another whole position marking, which is pretty neat. And they actually got it right. Um, this is a weather instrument shelter that is great to hide in in the game um when you're you're not getting attacked but it's pretty interesting because th the way they show it is they have beds in there typically it would just be um radio equipment to to talk back to the air traffic control tower mm -hmm. but again the shelter coloring is per faa and iko which is pretty cool so going down the runway yeah oh, i guess i can so they got all the striping on all the, the striping is correct your, your runway edge lighting looks even accurately spaced mm -hmm. per the standards of both systems mm -hmm. which is pretty neat and, we can head into and then it's a mimic on the other end of the runway with another Malzar system mm -hmm. uh, threshold markings Touchdown zone marking. So we're coming up. If you're playing, these are the touchdown zone area yeah. indicated by the double lines on either side. And the solid means that's where you touch down, mm -hmm. which so is pretty right. cool. And they got that right. Um, they yes, got the yeah. designation right as well. So one end is one number and the other end is another number. And it's based off the compass. Mm -hmm. And they actually look like they got it right if you were to look at a North Arrow. Mm -hmm. You zoom out and show the other system. Again, there's this another Mauser system with the lighting laid out exactly how it would be. Again, it's pretty realistic that they did, took the extra time to do this. Mm -hmm. That's what I find interesting. Yeah, they definitely went extra with the, um, like, just making this correctly detailed uh, and making sure it actually looks like what it was supposed to look like. So we'll oh, stop here. So this is... Even for small aircraft, they have markings on the ground, no lighting. Bigger international airports have lighting. But even here, they took the time to show radiuses going into a parking area 
designation, which is what those markings mean here. And the white lines indicate the wingspan allowed mm. for that position. Got you. And you'd be able to follow these yellow lines with the wheels of the plane to get into an Correct, with the nose of the plane, yeah. yes. And we also have some more, I'm guessing these would be more of those instrumental towers? Yes, side. another another probably, I want to say that that's another weather mm -hmm. type yeah. antenna that they tried to show. Um, usually on, on airports, even this size with these lighting systems, mm -hmm. they would have what you call a uh, uh, ILS, instrument landing system. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what color those shelters would be. So again, I'm still surprised they got, at least they got the coloring right, mm -hmm. but they're indicating most of these are like storage units for military, mm -hmm. um, bunk beds, you know, mm -hmm. but and then here again, would be your air traffic control. Tower, yes. Right? And that's the air traffic control tower. And the pilot would, oh, let's see what they got right here. They just have, so they have a bunch of, um, radars. They have, um, toggle switches for the lighting mm -hmm. you see the toggle switching there These are... yeah so that was that's probably like 1990s yeah. 80s where they did toggle and in 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 most current now they use like a touch screen almost like an ipad mm -hmm. to indicate you know what lighting is on and what lighting is off but with that it's the old toggle switches yeah. um the, the dials These? the dials next to the toggle switches These ones. that's to actually lower the light intensity mm. so in in this probably this manufacturing time period it would be on three settings one two and three mm -hmm. uh low medium and high so they actually used the the toggle and the dial mm -hmm. to control the lighting versus and, like a full touch screen yeah which is is like really old-fashioned change but, it based off like weather patterns like if it was really bright correct it was correct cloudy or something and you right just hit these these little switches nighttime they would probably have it on step three mm -hmm. well if it's like noon you only would need like step one right or a, it will noon meaning a cloudy like cloudy yeah. like in the morning you don't need in the if, if there's daylight and there's proper sunlight you don't even need any of the lighting on oh. to land because you have the markings yeah the lighting is secondary to the markings got you i didn't know but again i just want to say that the, this game pretty much impressed me with just seeing this and taking the time to make it as realistic for the player as possible um the other thing i just noticed you see the the, the, the asphalt that's different colors mm -hmm. that's actually indicating patching mm -hmm. so when when they're when they're building runways at some points if there's too much cracking on the runway they yeah. actually do patches like that so which is pretty funny because like to cheaply repair it? Yeah, cheaply repair it. They just put like a seal coat on it like you would for a driveway or something. Yeah. because um, They showed good. skid marks. Again, th this runway is just a piece of this game, and they actually took the detail to show in the touchdown is the area where the planes would scratch the ground yeah. with the rubber tires. Yeah. That's that's that's, cool. that's, that's interesting, too. Yeah. I, I definitely think it is something that's And they did it in the right spot. It, they, yeah. You know, they didn't show it further down. They didn't have the marking incorrect. So, so really, that's all the information I have for you guys today. This was a fun experience, and it helped me understand really just how far the devs went in intricacy of detail and research to make sure that their game was up to standards of properly emulating the time period and setting that they are going to do. And it makes you kind of wonder what other parts of the game have also similarly gotten such treatment. And it also makes you wonder when Arma 4 inevitably comes out around the corner, what that game will look like as it will have a much larger team much higher budget and much more focus than this game did and this game was able to pull off this level of detail on something as trivial as an airport so this has been christopher beast and my father i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you all hopefully next time